Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how to enable flex for your audio tracks so that if at a certain point while you're working on your songs and projects, you just kind of wonder, what would this sound like at a slower or faster tempo? You can do exactly that. You can change the tempo of your project. All your audio tracks will change their timing to match that new tempo and everything will just work. And basically, it's another video all about changing tempo of your Logic projects. I've hit on this on a number of different videos, but there's so many questions related to changing tempo and smart tempo and flex that I thought it'd be worth it to approach it from this angle that's really focused on the audio track portion. But you'll see we have software instruments in this project as well, which we will adjust their timing along with our audio tracks. So basically, we're going to focus squarely on the audio tracks. And even though we have take folders, we're going to enable flex, choose the appropriate flex motor algorithm for each of these tracks, and then change the tempo of the project. And everything again will just work. Also, before we dig in, a big shout out and thanks to longtime reader and subscriber Jimmy Copens. Jimmy is a Nashville based producer and engineer, and he emailed me with this exact question. And both he and the artist that he's working with, a John Z. Bowser, both gave me permission to use this project for today's video. So, Thank you so much, Jimmy and John, and I'll include links to Jimmy and John's websites in the description below. Let's dig in. All right, first things first, let's take a listen to the song that we're going to be adjusting the tempo of. I do think it's worth pointing out, if we take a look at the mixer, that there are a lot of plugins in this project that I do not own. So what you're about to hear at this very moment is not necessarily representative of the engineer or the artist's vision. Here we go. You know, definitely, this is a great song. I love the humor and the lyrics. And you can see here that we have multiple audio tracks in this project. We have vocals, we have a banjo, mandolin, and violin. And each one of these tracks has a take folder, which will prove to be no problem, which you'll see momentarily. Instead of digging into the weeds of the individual audio tracks, First, what we're going to do is, is we're going to adjust the tempo of a bounce of this project instead, which of course you would normally go to file, go down to bounce, project or section, and bounce out the project as a single stereo file. I suggest PCM with a file format of either Wave or AIFF, and we would click OK. Luckily, the engineer provided multiple bounces of this project and this will be the bounce that we'll use. This is a great, quick and easy way to test out different tempos for your song without having to dig into the weeds of the project and then having to choose different flex modes for each of the different audio tracks. So let's go to File, let's go down to New, and we'll open a brand new project. I'm just gonna create an audio track, and then we'll go to the Finder, and I'm going to select the bounce that we'll be adjusting the tempo of, and I'm going to drag it to an empty track in Logic Pro to ensure that the channel strip that is loaded is also in stereo. And one of the many things that is great about Logic Pro is that Logic embeds tempo information into all of the audio files that it generates. So we can actually import the original project tempo. We can also import the marker data as well. And if we squash things up, there we have it. Our project has gone from a tempo of 120 beats per minute to that of the project tempo of the stereo file, which is 72 BPM. We have markers, so we know where we are in the project. So we can take a listen now to the engineer's version of this project with those plugins in place. Let's take a quick listen. In the kitchen, floors I'm a waxing, dinner I'm a fixing, turn around and find a go, chomping and a licking. Awesome. Let's get rid of this empty track. And from here, we're going to click on the Show Hide Flex button here. So now in the track header, we can select a flex mode or enable flex for this stereo track. So let's just enable flex right now. You can also do this right from the region inspector, which is found in this tab in the inspector. And right here we have flex and follow, which you can turn on or off. Cool, so Logic has analyzed the transients of this stereo bounce and it's chosen an algorithm automatically of slicing. 
which is not necessarily the algorithm I would have chosen for this stereo file. Slicing is really a best fit for drums and percussion audio tracks, but we'll leave it for now. And let's now adjust the tempo to something significantly slower than 72 BPM. The artist vision was just to try out something a couple BPM slower, but I think we should try out something significantly slower just to get an idea of what's going on. So we can see some timing adjustments have been made. We set this back to 72. The color reverts to its original color. So we know when things change color that the timing has been adjusted in this file. Let's take a listen to the result of our tempo change. So obviously we've slowed down this stereo file, but it sounds really weird. It sounds super choppy. And again, that's because slicing is really best fit for drums and percussion. Instead, I'm going to choose polyphonic, which is a much better fit for things that are harmonically complex, like a rhythm guitar playing chords or a piano or a whole mix. Okay, we can see some of those gaps have been filled. Let's take a listen now at 60 BPM. All right, way better, but the vocals sound kind of weird. And let's be honest, this is dramatically slowed down by 12 BPM, which is definitely a little excessive. So let's set the tempo now to 70 BPM, which is a much more subtle timing adjustment. And let's take a listen. All right. That's a really great way to test drive a different tempo for this song. We can go faster as well or slower and the file just follows suit. Obviously the vocals still sound a little weird, a little artifacty, but again, this is just a way to quickly test out if we like the tempo changes to our song. I'm gonna say yes, this is preferred, these changes to the tempo at 70 BPM. So let's now navigate back to our original project and make those changes in the project itself. We're back in the original project and the next step we're gonna take is going to the show hide flex icon right here in the tracks area, which will reveal the different options for flex in the track headers. And from here, we just need to choose the appropriate flex motor algorithm for each of the audio tracks in this project. To start, we have the vocals. And a vocalist typically is a single voice performing one note at a time. A really good fit for the vocals could either be flex pitch or monophonic. You might choose flex pitch if you're planning on doing some corrective procedures to the pitching of your vocalist. For this video, I don't plan on making any pitch adjustments. So instead, I'm going to choose monophonic. Cool. We can see that flex has been enabled. And if we expand our take folder for our vocalist, we can see here that the transients have been analyzed for our vocalist. And this is applied on each take. So although we don't see these transient markers on the comp level of this vocal take folder, we can dig into each of the individual takes and make flex adjustments. Cool. Moving on, let's take a look and a listen to the banjo here. And let's determine what kind of algorithm works best for the banjo. Okay, the banjo is playing more than one note at a time in sequence, but at times it's playing more than one note at the same time. So I would suggest that this is a more complex audio file. And as such, I would choose polyphonic for the banjo. And again, if we expand the take folder, we can see those transient markers for each of the individual takes. We take a listen to the mandolin. Okay, we definitely have some notes being performed simultaneously. I would suggest, again, this is more complex material. So let's choose polyphonic. And I'll choose polyphonic for the mandolin. And we'll take a listen to the violin. So basically polyphonic for everything. The three flex modes you most likely will use nine times out of 10 is number one. Slicing, again, for drums and percussion. Number two, monophonic for single instruments performing one note at a time. 
And number three, polyphonic for any harmonically complex material, such as a guitar or a piano. At this point, we really could just change the tempo of the project and everything will follow along. But you might be wondering, hey, Chris, you have all these software instrument tracks in this project. Don't you have to do anything for those? And the answer is no. When it comes to software instruments and MIDI data, it's already baked into the DNA of the MIDI information to change its timing in relation to the global project tempo. So if we slow down the project, all of the software instruments will slow down accordingly. And the same if we speed things up. The one thing I would suggest that we you know, take a look at is this drummer track. We can see it's muted, so it's probably not part of the project. But if you have a drummer track that you love their performances and it very much is a part of your projects, in that case, I would select that drummer track, which will select all of the drummer regions on that track. And then I would right click one of the drummer regions and go down to convert and convert these to MIDI regions. And the reason I suggest this is because drummer regions are so fluid and they're so willing to adapt and change based on how you adjust parameters that sometimes they can be a little too fluid and we don't want to make a big global change like change the tempo and then accidentally changing all of our drummer performances as a consequence of that big change. So by converting our drummer regions to MIDI regions, those performances are essentially locked in place, but will adjust their tempo without changing everything else. Cool. So now if we go to the tempo in the LCD and then we change the tempo to about 60 BPM, take a listen. And just like that, everything has changed its tempo to match this updated tempo of our project, which is amazing. And it sounds significantly better than when we change the tempo of that stereo bounce of this project. Of course, again, this tempo change is pretty significant. So let's change it to maybe 70 BPM. Take a listen. And just like that, everything's working the way we want it to. Now, the last piece for today that I want to show you, we're actually going to dig into a third-party application, which is Melodyne from Celimony. And there's a particular reason for this. If we take a listen to the vocals between bars seven and nine, we may hear some of that familiar artifacty garbled sound of flex pitch in the vocals. Let's take a listen and see if it occurs. Floors I'm a waxing, dinner I'm a fixing, turn around and find a goat. Chomping and a licking, pop. So, right there, the chomping and a licking. Chomping and a licking, pop a stop. We have some artifactiness with the vocals. And you might be asking yourself, well, what the heck? We didn't use flex pitch when we chose a flex algorithm for our vocals. And that's true. However, when you choose monophonic mode, Logic not only analyzes the transients, but Logic also analyzes for any pitch data as well. And thus, we unfortunately have some artifacts in this vocal track. Now, there are some workarounds around some of these artifacts that can occur, but sometimes you don't have time to work around certain problems, and you just need things to work. In this case, I'm going to change the tempo back to the original project tempo of 72 BPM, and I'm going to turn off flex for the vocal track. We can then hide flex for this project. And then I'm going to export the vocal track by selecting the vocal track and then going to file, going down to export. One track is audio file. And I'm going to export this to my desktop. We'll leave the original name, set the save format to wave, bit depth to 24 bit. We'll bypass any effect plugins. And we can even turn off normalization because we can see that none of these tracks are at risk of clipping. And let's export. Next up, let's open up Melodyne. Melodyne is a fantastic application for adjusting the pitch of your vocal tracks and other instruments. Of course, this is assuming that you own a license for Melodyne. At this point, let's navigate to the Finder, find our vocal track on the desktop, and drag it right into Melodyne. Cool, Melodyne is analyzing for pitch information. We're just gonna focus on tempo. And if you take a look at the top, we can see for tempo, it's not actually set to 72 BPM. It's set to 73.07. And if we place the playhead at different moments along the timeline, we can see that the tempo 
is not sticking to 72 BPM. And that's because Melodyne has analyzed the transients as well to try to determine the tempo throughout the file. So this could cause some mishaps when we try to adjust the tempo of our vocal track. In that case, let's go back to our logic project. And we have some MIDI files here that we can export as well, which you can use as a timing reference in other applications. Luckily, we can export the drums here by going to File, going to Export, Selection as MIDI File. And we can export drums for a tempo map. However, if you don't have any software instruments in your own projects, I would suggest going to the New Tracks dialog, creating a new software instrument. It doesn't even need to have an instrument loaded. Click Create. And then I would right click in the Tracks area and create a MIDI region. And in that new MIDI region on that empty track that we've created, let's double click and let's just add a single note anywhere in the piano roll. So I'm gonna move this to bar one. And now with that single note on that single region on this empty software instrument track, we can go to file. We can go down to export again, selection as MIDI file. And we'll just call this empty and click save. Okay, if we go back to Melodyne, if we now click right here on this drop down arrow next to the tempo, we can assign tempo. And as you can see, there are tempo adjustments along the lane here. That's A-OK. -okay. We're gonna go to file and we're gonna import tempo. And on the desktop, let's import the empty MIDI file that just had that single MIDI note. And just like that, the tempo for our entire vocal audio track is now set to 72 BPM, at which point we can click on that drop down arrow to edit the tempo. And we can edit the tempo any which way we wanna go. So let's set it to 60. Mama was yelling, hollering. And if we listen down by bar eight. And a licking, Papa stopped short, turned and looked away, grabbed a whiskey and a. Everything's sounding good. So let's set this back to 70 because that was the intended tempo that the artist wanted to hear this song at. And we can then go to file and go down to export. We'll export a WAV file at the same sample rate, 24 bit. And let's make sure to set the range to the entire length of the file. And let's click export and save new vocal to the desktop. Now, if we go to logic and let's zoom out here, and we can just get rid of this track. Let's now go to the finder and drag in our new vocal track set to 70 BPM. And if we adjust the project tempo to 70 and mute the original vocal, let's take a listen right about here. And no artifacts right there where we heard them between bars eight and nine. And there you have it. Just like that, we took three different approaches for adjusting the tempo of our project from number one, a stereo file, just a quick and easy getting a sense of how the tempo would sound at a slower or faster tempo. Then number two, once we decided, yes, we want to change the tempo of our project, we adjusted on a per audio track basis, choosing the correct flex mode for each of those tracks and then changing the tempo. And then number three, if you run into any artifacts as a result of flex pitch for your particular project, doesn't mean you will, just if you do, you can use Melodyne from Celimony to make these tempo adjustments to your vocal tracks and then re-import the updated vocal track into your project. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.